For many centuries, scientists and religious leaders have wondered what the actual star was that led the three kings, or wise men, to Bethlehem to witness Jesus' birth. Because in the entire period from 10 to 1 BC, nothing interesting at all happened, astronomically speaking. There were no bright comets. There were no supernova explosions. Or anything else that could have drawn the attention. But an even bigger mystery was how these kings, who came from the east, who followed a star that appeared in the east, could still arrive in Bethlehem in the west. Only recently the answer to this question has been discovered, and it's actually very simple. There has never been a star, and the entire thing is just a copy of an old Egyptian myth that existed already for thousands of years earlier. And let me explain. The ancient Egyptians were obsessed with the nightly sky, and in their culture the most important star was Sirius, which also happens to be the brightest real star in the sky. In the days of the pyramids, Sirius first reappeared in the sky around July, which coincidentally also was the month that the yearly floods of the River Nile arrived. These floods were massively important to the Egyptians because they brought fertile sediments to their lands, without which their entire civilization would go to ruin. So they associated the star Sirius with the god Horus, the son of Isis, who according to the myth would destroy Set, the devil, and bring prosperity to the people. So Sirius became the symbol of the birth of Horus, the son and saviour. But the similarities with the story of Jesus don't stop here. Also for centuries, scientists have been wondering why the Egyptians, who were so incredibly skilled that they were able to build these enormous pyramids to geometrical perfection, didn't build the three pyramids of Giza in a straight line, or at the same distance from each other. As you can see on this satellite view, the right pyramid is slightly up and further away from the other two. Again, we have to look for the answer in the nightly sky. This is the constellation of Orion, as it appeared to the ancient Egyptians. Also, this constellation was very important to them, and especially the three stars in its belt, which represented the eyes and nose of Osiris, Isis's husband and the father of all the gods. If we overlay the star map with the pyramids, we find that the pyramids have been built exactly on the same positions as the stars of Orion's belt. So the Giza site is in fact a gigantic star map. If we now return to a broader view of the ancient Egyptian sky, we see the three stars of Orion, the three kings, or wise men, of the pyramids, who come from the east, who observe a star, Sirius, in the east, the star which announces the birth of the Saviour. The story of the stars only told by Matthew, and we know quite for sure that this man spent a lot of his time in Egypt and Ethiopia. The Coptic Church of Egypt and Ethiopia is one of the oldest in the world, and some of the oldest evidence of Christian worship has been found in those countries. So it sounds more than likely that Matthew added a reworked version of the incredibly popular Isis myth to his gospel, in order to make it sound more convincing. This also explains why Matthew is the only gospel writer who tells the story of the exile of Jesus and his family into Egypt. Obviously, he wanted to make his Egyptian audience feel more important. So in the end, the story of the star and the three wise men may sound very nice, but under modern law, Matthew would definitely be charged with copyright violation.